Um, good morning. So uh, my name is Jean-Baptiste. Uh, you, some of you probably know what, what I've been doing on the video line, FFmpeg, and so on. But most of you don't know that I had a different life where I actually did work. Um, I was the CTO of a cloud gaming company called Shadow, which probably none of you heard about. Um, and that gave me an idea, and that's what I'm presenting today. So today I'm not really speaking about VLC or FFmpeg, so I'm going to put that away. Um, and so we're going to talk about lower latency, right? So uh, I mean actually lower, right? So of course we were to adaptive streaming 30 sec 60 seconds and we went to low latency, ultra low latency, mega ultra low latency. Um, I want to go even where, like hyper ultra or ludicrous low latency as we call it. Um, so let's call it, um, I don't know, near real time latency. Um, why, right? Why do we need lower latency, right? Uh, this is for use cases that are not um, broadcast. Um, we are talking about cloud gaming, cloud, desktop, remote control, uh, remote desktops, everything that is a visual cloud, um, Citrix, TeamViewer, and so on. Um, we are talking about controlling drones or robots, right, or, uh, or cars from a distance. Um, we are talking about where anything where you actually need to control an actual machine, right? Because in that case, every milliseconds matters because you're going, everything that you gain here is going to give you an edge on the networking time, right? Because of course, then you're going to control from far away. Um, there are many other use cases. One of them is a kind of remote monitor, right? You could take anything that outputs HDMI and stream that, right? It's kind of sling box. And there are many use cases for that for uh, in uh, robots for surgery, industrial robots, where basically you have a vendor, I give you a big box and you have just an HDMI out or USB key uh, and USB, right? So they are big boxes, but you're not allowed to touch them. So how do you control them in distance? And finally, and we've seen before with the talk from Zoe, is that there is a lot of needs for app streaming, right? Um, secure browser or anything where you just want to have one app that is running on the cloud because you need more power, because you need AI and you need to stream that. And all of those have in common where you need to have an extremely, extremely fast video feed and inputs to control that. Uh, so what is Kyber? Well, Kyber is actually that. It's basically an open source, real-time SDK to control machines. It's a kind of um, next generation parsec, but open source. It's both a client, a server, a networking stack. It can stream video, audio, subtitles unidirectionally. It can stream also all your inputs. And, and don't ignore that, right? Streaming inputs is difficult. Uh, it needs to be bidirectional. All that is uh, modular and an SDK and application, and none of that is using WebRTC. Yay. Um, it's also because, of course, it's based on VLC and FFmpeg. Sorry, I lied. Um, it's multi-support for the clients, but also multi-platform for the servers. Um, it works on with all type of codecs, uh, hardware and software encoders. So a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's see a demo. So what you're seeing on the screen, on the right side is a server, on the left side is a client. What is happening is that the server, it, those are two of the same machine, uh, GeForce 1080, uh, same laptop, well, same CPU, same GPU, same RAM, everything. Um, and what you're seeing is that basically it gets grabbed, encoded, sent through, uh, through basically a network, which is here, zero milliseconds, and then you can see, right? So what you can see, because you're very good, you can see around one frame of latency, one frame and a half. Uh, of course, because I didn't lie, it also works on Mac OS, right? So this is a Mac Mini that you can see. Um, and again, this is CSGO, which is one of the most difficult game for latency. Um, of course, I work on Linux, so this is the best game ever when in on Linux. Uh, this is a Debian machine, of course. As you can see, the controller is attached to the client machine in Stream Day. Of course, we have versions working on the mobile because VLC runs on the mobile. And here we also see those very low latencies. Uh, it's working, of course, because it's Android or Android TV. But the last one is the most interesting one, and it's the web version. Um, and this is uh, Street Fighter 6, 7, which also is a very low latency uh, requirement. And this is working directly inside the web browser without WebRTC. So the big question is, how do we do that? Um, and, and of course, you imagine that I'm not the one playing because I am absolutely not able to do all that. Um, and you can see also that the web version uh, is on the controller. Uh, if you were at forums, and you should have been, you have seen the actual demo of all that. Because I did not lie, um, this is also running on a Linux server and also a Mac server 
or an Android server. And this is very different from the things that you've seen with Noise DCV, HP Anywhere, or, um, or uh, Parsec. This runs multi-platform on the server side and multi-platform on the client side. How does it work? Well, we have an audio video server, which is basically grabbing um, either the desktop or a frame buffer or HDMI, basically encoding that in real time. Um, and then we have an input server, which is doing more or less the same. And all that is sent to a, basically a, a muxing application, which is basically taking all that and sending that to a network. And on the other side, we have exactly the same. We have a player, which is, of course, based on libvlc. And we have, of course, the same input server, which is basically doing the other thing, which is grabbing or injecting, depending on the configuration. And we have also um, a client, which is basically con talking to a server to do authentication and so on. So the video server is based on FFmpeg libraries through uh, another program called TXProto. Um, basically, this is a push-based um, streaming server, which is building at runtime a graph and is multi-threaded for every node. Um, and the video server can actually composite GPU overlays. Um, it's different from what we've done all the time on FFmpeg, where or GStreamer or UPipe or VLC, where basically you, the only thing you care is actually to synchronize audio and video. Here, we don't care about that. It's fast, fast, fast. So as soon as the frame is it, we push it to the next node. So that's how it's worked. On the same side, on the same, on the client side, it's exactly the same. We tune VLC, like destroyed VLC, to basically destroy all the difficult work to have a clock to synchronize audio and video, right? It needs to be fast, so we move all the buffers in it. But the good thing is, based on VLC and FFmpeg, we tested H.264, HVC, AV1, VP9. We tested, of course, audio with PCM, FLAC, Opus, and we could do anything. Um, we support any type of hardware encoder or any type of software encoder. This works with NVIDIA and AMD and Intel and ARM encoders, but also all the software encoders. Uh, and we can support, of course, streaming 420 or 422 or 444. We even have shaders to improve, to do some kind of unsampling for the 420 to 444. Um, so that's the video part. But um, the input part is not simpler, right? It's a, um, a new server that is implemented in Rust, completely from scratch, and it can do it's also graph-based, push. It can do keyboard, mouse, cursor, gamepad. We have the rumble, copy-paste, file transfer, USB over IP. So you can plug your Wacom tablet and go on the other direction. Um, and in, it's also cross-platform. Um, and the network side is probably the most interesting, innovative part, is that we're basically using Quick and web transport, not uh, media over Quick. Um, so we tunnel everything, audio and video, over a single socket. So what did we achieve? On desktop, um, at 60 FPS with a normal machine, it's a GeForce 1080, right? We have one frame of latency, one vsync, 16 milliseconds. And I think that here, what we're limited about is, and, and that's end to end, right? It's a glass, glass to glass. You can see, you, know, you see the two squares, it's one frame. So, so we take a picture with a, a 1000 Hertz camera, and so you can actually see the glass to glass latency, right? It's the same, that's why it's the same monitors. So we get one frame. And so the question is, why are we at one frame? And the reason is that we're waiting for the, uh, for the vsync. So we go to 120 hertz, and we realize that we have one frame and a half, so that's 12 milliseconds. And so that's also limited by the vsync. So we go to 240 hertz, and we realize we can do 10 milliseconds end-to-end, end-to-end, glass-to-glass latency. And on the web, it's exactly the same, except well, we have one extra frame, which is probably done by Chrome, of latency. But that means that we can also, on the web browser, um, especially in HVC, get two frames, so 16 milliseconds at 120 hertz, and basically 33 milliseconds um, in 60 FPS. I think this is pretty cool. Um, the protocol, we have multiple support. Um, it's quick or web transport, because the web version supports web transport, but the rest is quick. But on quick, we use, of course, we love quick because it's TLS, one socket, multi-stream, bidirectional, and so on, but also because um, we can do audio and video as datagrams, right? And what we do here is that we have multiple modes and one is unreliable FEC, which means that we're sending datagrams and instead of relying on the retransmission from Quick, we're actually doing forward error correction with Raptor Q so that when we drop some packets, we can reconstruct without retransmission. And this, of course, increases a bit your bandwidth, but it lowers your latency a lot. 
And also, because we have full control of the protocol, we can, for example, detect the jitter on the network socket and realize that the jitter is increasing and send a message to the encoder to go down in uh, bitrate. The web version is really cool because it's exactly the same version as the desktop version because it's Rust. So everything is compiled to WebAssembly. And the rendering is done with our own rendering, either through VLC.wasm that I displayed last year, or through web codec and a custom canvas output. Um, and of course, no WebRTC was used in that demo. So um, it's open source. It's going to be AGPA plus a commercial license. It's going to be soon on Kyber.media. If you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.